Well, hello and welcome everyone to this presentation. Boost your photo editing superpowers with Luminar Flex. I'm Videlli and I'm part of the Skylum education team. Now our presenter today is a portrait photographer, educator and Skylum's director of education and development. Please welcome Abba Shapiro. Well, thank you very much, V, and V is for Vanelli, for those who are just joining in, one of our co-educators as part of the EDU team at Skylum. And I want to thank everybody for joining us today. We're going to be looking at Luminar Flex and specifically focusing on Luminar Flex 1.1, if you haven't already updated Luminar Flex 1.1 and you already own it and have it installed, if you just launch the application, it will ask you if you want to update and it will download the updater for you and will update you to the current version. And let's talk a little bit about some of the changes or four of the big changes or enhancements to Luminar Flex 1.1. And then I'll step back a little bit and just do an overview of best practices on using this plugin with the host applications. And those host applications are Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Lightroom Classic, and that's for both the PC and the Mac, as well as Photoshop Elements. It also works as a plugin for photos for the Mac operating system. And for those who are still using Aperture, it works as a plugin for Aperture as well. So depending on what your current workflow is, it will work with all of those five different host applications. Now we added four big new features or functionality with Flex 1.1. And the first thing that I want to focus on, and if you look at my screen, you can see it. I'm actually hovering my mouse over one of the key things is we've added the Accent AI filter 2.0 version. So we've updated that. And the biggest change with Accent AI filter 2.0 is we've added a human aware feature, which basically means that Luminar Flex in addition to being able to process an image generally, and I'll talk a little bit about what the functionality of Accent AI is, but it also recognizes people and gives you better automatic processing. And let me step back for those of you who have not used Luminar Flex and talk a little bit about the Accent AI filter in general. What the Accent AI filter does is it allows you with one slider, and I'm gonna apply this slide, I'm just gonna double click and apply it so we have one filter applied to our image and we're currently inside the Luminar Flex plugin. I've sent this over from Adobe Lightroom and we'll talk about that flow shortly. But with one slider, you can fix a lot of image problems. A lot of problems are situations where you would use multiple sliders if you had used raw develop. So with a single slider, it analyzes the image and it fixes tone, it fixes color, there's clarity enhancement, there's sharpness, there's color enhancement, all with one slider. So if I move this to the right, you'll notice that this picture will improve. Do you notice that background's just starting to really pop? Now, it's subtle if I did it slowly, but let me turn this on and off. I'm gonna press this little eyeball at the top. It's a quick preview button. And this was the before and this was the after. And you notice that the background has really improved, but it didn't affect their skin tones because they're properly balanced. So the whole idea behind the Accent AI 2.0 filter is using artificial intelligence, our smart machine learning, to help you process your pictures faster. And the way that we developed this, and this is really what AI is, is that we took tens of thousands of images and we took the before any processing was done and then we had them hand processed by a slew of photographers and using machine learning, we compared the before and the after and it taught the machines the things that a real photographer would do if they were doing this manually. And from this machine learning, we created an algorithm, a fancy term for math, the thing you fall asleep uh, during when you were in high school, uh, to do all the work for you. And that's really the beauty of the Accent AI filter. And this is a legacy filter. We've had it in previous versions of Luminar Flex and as well as Luminar 3. But with version 2.0, 
we've really enhanced it because we wanted it to be able to fix your image, but not overcorrect or undercorrect skin tone. And we will look at several images throughout the webinar where I can explain how it thinks and how it works. And I said I'd be showing you some tips and tricks, and this did a nice fix, but it stopped at 100. And sometimes you may want to go to more than 100. Maybe you want it really to pop. And a nice thing about any of the filters in Luminar Flex is you can actually put on multiple versions of them on the same layer. So if I wanted to have this even punch up a little bit more, I could simply click on the Accent AI filter again, puts on another version, and just slide that boost over. And as you can see, it's really starting to pick up that background. Yet once again, they're not getting over-processed. So here we have, I'm going to do a side-by-side -side this time. This is the after, this was the before. This is a nice image, but this is a very quick way to really improve the quality of an image. And that is one of the big features. So that's all I'm going to do with this one image. I want to talk about some of the other features of Luminar 1.1, some of the things that we've done to actually make your workflow faster and smoother. Let me go ahead and apply this. And we're going to, this will take us back into Lightroom, where I sent it from. So it's processed the image. And this is our after. And if I go to my group settings, let's see if I'm in the right area. I'm going to simply hit the G key, and this is our, our finished image. I want to work with a couple of other images to talk about how that Accent AI 2.0 works with skin tone. So we saw it with the couple on the beach, and it did a nice job. But what about a situation where you mostly have a person's face in the image? So I have this image here, and I'm going to send this over to the Luminar Flex plugin. And there are two ways that you can send an image from Adobe Lightroom CC, or Adobe Lightroom Classic, I should say, over to Luminar Flex. And there's two different workflows and two different benefits. So let me just talk about both of those. The first way, or the traditional way, is of course, you can right click and you can say edit in. And there we have our option to edit into Luminar Flex. I also have it set up as one of my default keyboard shortcuts. And of course, you can get it by clicking on the image, and you can always get it by the file drop-down menu. So if I do this and I send it over, what is the default action of Adobe Photoshop? I'm sorry, Adobe Lightroom Classic is it creates a 16-bit TIFF file with all your adjustments if you made that, and sends it over to whatever plugin that you want to send it to. And this is just the way Adobe has designed Lightroom to work. So this is standard practice, but sometimes you may want to take advantage when you're developing an image of everything that might have been in the original raw file. And if we take a look at the right side of my interface, you see this is a .arw file. This is one of the Sony raw files, but we also work with, of course, all the major files, all the major uh, camera manufacturers, so CR2s, if you're Canon, NEF files, uh, we have the Fuji files. So I want to be able to take advantage of the full bit depth of my original raw image and all that detail and dynamic range. So instead of sending it over by right clicking and saying edit in, which would send by default a 16-bit image, which is again the default workflow, we have another feature here that's really nice. If I go up under file and I slide down to plug in extras, I can transfer this to Luminar Flex. And what Flex will get is the original raw file, so I can really pull out a lot of the detail. Now, the nice thing when I launched this that it did, that it will do for all of you, is now whenever you send an image from Photoshop or Lightroom or Mac OS or anything uh, of the host applications into Luminar Flex, it will automatically open the filters catalog. So if you had been using it before, and I know from the poll that we did prior to starting the webinar that a good percentage of you are already using Luminar Flex, you'll notice now it automatically opens with your filter catalog available. And the nice thing about that is it's just one less step you have to do before you start working and editing.
So you'll notice that's a little bit different if you've used the previous version. Let's once again return to Accent AI 2.0. And I'm going to simply click on that to apply it. There's my slider. And take a look what happens with this image. In the previous image, their faces were properly exposed, so it didn't do any modifications. If we look at this image, you know, at first blush, it looks pretty good. But there's actually some shadows in her face that gives a little bit too much from the hat and the way the light was hitting it. So if I move this over, the new Accent AI 2.0 is smart enough to enhance the face a little bit as well as the background. So take a look as we move that slider from left to right. So as you can see, and I can push it all the way to 100%. Again, it's personal preference. Maybe I want to stop there. But for the sake of the webinar, I want to make everything as extreme as possible so you can see the differences. But it changed the lighting on her face. Okay, and it really opened up some of those shadows as well as opening up the background. I'm going to switch again between the before and after. This was the before and this was the after, and I think it really has enhanced the image. And this is one of the features of Accent AI 2.0. It's smart enough to understand if a person's skin tone is properly exposed and knows how much to correct it in addition to correcting the background. Let me go ahead and hit apply here and bring it back. When you're sending an image from Lightroom to Luminar Flex, it actually creates a second instance of that image and places it next to the first one. So this is my first raw image. And what happens is when I send anything over, it duplicates that image, sends it over. Any of the processing that you've done is then applied to the brand new image. So as you can see here, this was the original one that was sent over. And this is now the modified one. And it sends back a lovely 16-bit TIFF file. And you can, again, work on that to your heart's content. Once again, you're inside of Adobe Lightroom Classic. And again, here's another instance. I have a bunch of different shots here, but she's properly exposed. I'm going to just quickly send that over. Accent AI, select that bring that over and take a look at the difference. It'll fix the background, but her face is properly exposed. Doesn't affect it. This is my before. This is my after. Colors really pop. So that's one of the things that you can do when you're working with Luminar Flex and one of the changes that we have. Let's talk a little bit about some of the other new features. I'm going to spend probably about five or 10 minutes on, on three big changes that we uh, have done to really enhance your workflow. And then we'll go down and talk a little bit about some processing tricks and techniques and respond to some of the questions. So let me go ahead. We'll apply this and send it back. I could, could hit cancel. So we'll let that go. Take a look at some other options. I have a lot of images for this webinar with people just because I wanted some of that flexibility. But I'm going to go ahead and just work with some vacation kind of shots. Nothing too fancy, nothing too pretty. We'll take a look at, uh, at uh, I want to have something with a little bit of sky in here. And something actually is a little bit more in what I would define as a horrific shot that needs to be fixed. And this is a perfect example of one where I was really fighting that uh, I didn't have any lights. I did want the shadow, you know, so you have this blown out background and you have a foreground that's not lit. And let's see how uh, easily and quickly I can edit this in Luminar Flex. So once again, I really like working with my raw images and I just go transfer to Luminar Flex. I keep using this because it is one of my favorite features, the fact that I have a plugin that I can actually work with my raw files. So here I have my image. And what I want to do is I want to talk to you a little bit about workspaces. And workspaces are one of those hidden gems inside of Luminar Flex that a lot of people don't know about uh, and they don't necessarily take advantage of. And we've really enhanced the ability for you to customize workspaces directly from within the plugin. So by default, when you first install the application, there's no workspace that automatically launches. It's an empty workspace. But you'll notice here there are eight different workspaces available. And you can also create your own. I've created my own for Accent AI 
But let's talk about workspaces. So depending on what you're editing and the type of image you're working on, you may want to do different things. And so we've broken them into things such as image aware, relight and color, and so on. You can read that yourself. But what is this really all about? Whenever I select a workspace, what Luminar Flex will do is it will automatically apply a preset grouping of filters. Now, none of these filters have any adjustments applied. So if you notice, when I applied a workspace, it didn't change my image. What it did do is it gave me a selection of filters and a workflow. In other words, I'm going to start at the top and work my way down, and I can choose to use or not use any of these filters. But this way, I don't have to keep going from the left side of my filter catalog and then throwing it over to the workspace just to find um, and set things up. So these are predefined, and I can go through and say, yeah, we'll try a little bit of Accent AI, see that, maybe a little bit of Sky Enhancer, add a little bit of Golden Hour, no trees, don't need to work with foliage, not worrying about saturation. I like a little bit of structure here. I think I want this to be a little bit crisper, and we can work with maybe some advanced contrast to bring out the highlights. So not necessarily the best for this image, but, I could do things very quickly. Now, here's the cool thing. Let's say I really like most of what this does as a standard developing technique, but I always like to have a raw develop in there. So I'm gonna click and add raw develop. So there, raw develop or any develop filter, you'll see this will be raw develop if you send over the raw image through the transfer process. If you send over a TIFF file, it'll just say develop, but it always is placed at the top of the workflow. And so here I can, you know, open up my shadows a little bit. I can recover a little bit of the highlights, maybe play with the exposure to start getting the image a little bit closer. And I could really start refining it. And then I could play with these down here. So I like that. I don't use foliage enhancer a lot, so I'm going to turn that off. And I like to use a vignette, so I'm going to add a vignette. It's at the bottom. And perhaps... I want to also add something else. And maybe I want to use the tone filter. And the tone filter has this great little feature called Smart Tone. What's really nice about Smart Tone is if I move that slider to the right, it opens up my shadows without changing the color. And it also doesn't blow out my highlights. It really works. And then you can see it's opening up some of the red in the dress. Or if I move it to the left, it'll recover the highlights. So I really like Smart Tone, but you know something? I don't like it at the end. Well, I can move the order of my filters around very easily. I'm going to go up here so you can see it a little bit better. Click under filters and I'm going to collapse everything. So now I can just see all of my filters. And one thing folks don't necessarily know is that you can grab a filter and simply click and hold and drag it and change the order of where it happens in your workflow. So maybe I want that tone to happen right here. And as a matter of fact, I think golden hour for the way I like to use it, I like to bring it more towards the end as just a color tweak. So now I've rearranged the order and depending on the order, it does affect you know, how the image will look. And I love this workspace for what I do. So I'm going to change this. It now says custom because I've modified it and I can save any of my settings here as my own new workspace. So if I click Save New Workspace, I'm gonna give it a name, I'm gonna call it ABBA Standard, and I'll save that as a new workspace. Now, if I look at my dropdown, ABBA Standard is one of my options. If I always want it to open with ABBA Standard available, I can set that as my default. Now, whenever I send an image from a host application to Luminar Flex, I will see all of these filters available to me. They won't have any of the sliders or adjustments made. As a matter of fact, if I've made an adjustment to a filter, you see that it's changed to this orange color. That's a visual indication that I've modified it. If it's white, then it won't be. It obviously has no change. If I went in here and clicked on this, I'm going to just open it up a little bit, maybe bring down the saturation, bring up the vibrance. This is something I do to neutralize an image. Notice how that's changed to orange. So this is great. I've created my own default and I can have it open up by default all the time. 
But if I decide I don't want that, I'm doing something such as intensify to bring out clarity and contrast, I could switch to that. And if you switch workspaces, this is an important thing to note, it replaces all of those filters. And because it's replaced all of those filters, it does reset back to your default. Okay, so when you switch it, you know, it's gonna give you another set and I can try to do this all again from scratch. Now, we all make mistakes and sometimes you do things by accident. And you're like, oh, I can't believe I just did that. Well, of course you can do undos and it's control Z or command Z or command Z, control Z, depending on which part of the world you're coming from uh, to do a, an undo. But you also have access to that undo up here. And as a matter of fact, this will undo one step but to the right of that, there's a little drop down, and this is the history of every single thing I've done to this image since I've sent it to the plugin. So I can easily see what I've done. I can go back to any point in time, all the way back to the original. So I can go back here and say, oh, that was the status at this point. And unless I make a change, which will erase everything that happened after that, I can jump back to any other point in time. So this is really nice. So if I had made that workspace mistake, I could just go back and bring in the workspace that we have here. So this is all nice. You can do this now all within the plugin. And I want to point out one other thing about workspaces is that if you go over here under the file dropdown menu, you'll see that there's an option that says show workspaces folder. And if you click on that, you can see any custom workspaces that you have created, which is nice because I can save this to an external hard drive or a thumb drive as a backup. I can move it from one machine to another or even email it to a friend and say, look, I have this great workspace, uh, give it a try and vice versa. So that's a nice feature. And if you wanna get rid of a workspace, if it's there, you can just drag it out of the folder, it won't be seen. So maybe you just wanna move it out temporarily or you can delete it. And of course, with any workspace, if I go to the drop down and I hover my uh, mouse over any of my custom ones, I could hit the little X and it will delete it if it gets too cluttered. So we have a variety of workspaces available and these are all designed for different ways to attack and process your image. So go ahead, try workspaces, build your own from scratch and you'll really see a increase in the way you can start editing your images without having to start drag thing, dragging things in. While we're in here, let's talk a little bit about looks. Looks are, an, are another thing that's great. I'm gonna use a different image here. Uh, I could have hit cancel, I did hit apply. And in this case, instead of coming from Lightroom, I'm gonna actually come from Photoshop. Uh, we'll work with a different image here because I also wanna show you that workflow. So if I'm in Photoshop and I wanna send uh, my image to Luminar Flex to fix, of course I can select the image and simply go to File, I'm sorry, I had a little bit of uh, Lightroom Classic in my brain there. I can go over here to Filter, down to Skylum Software, and send this to Luminar Flex. And that's great, but I wanna show you a trick if you aren't already aware of this. Before I send anything to another filter, and this works with other filters uh, that you might have, other plugins, but it really works very well with Luminar Flex, is that if I turn this into a smart object, okay? So I'm gonna right click on that and I'm gonna say convert to a smart object. Now, if you haven't used smart objects before, I'll give you about the 20 second explanation of what a smart object is. Normally when you put a filter or you modify a layer in Photoshop, when you hit accept, you're done. And about the only choices you have is to undo or redo, you can't tweak it again. But if you make something a smart object, what it does is it applies that filter to that, but you have the ability to modify it if you change your mind. And I'll show you that in practice after we go through this exercise. So now I'm ready to apply the filter, filter, Skylum software, Luminar Flex. And we're gonna examine the way that you can use looks within Luminar Flex 1.1. Again, it's another area where we've enhanced the plugin. So I've sent this image over and I'm ready to start processing it. And if you notice at the bottom of my screen, I have a panel and this panel has a variety of looks in a category called professional. 
and these thumbnails are representative of what will happen to my image when I click on them. So if I click on AI Auto Enhancer, you'll see the image will change, but take a look over to the right side and you'll see that a bunch of filters have been applied. And not only have the filters been applied, but the settings uh, on these filters have been saved. So when I click on this, it not only applies, say, the Accent AI 2.0 and Sky Enhancer, but it also has them at certain settings. So the difference between a look and a workspace, which we discussed earlier, is that workspaces apply filters, but without any of the sliders adjusted. A look will apply filters with some of the settings adjusted in the sliders to get you to a certain point quickly. And I can go through, and this is just you know the auto enhance, this was the before. So even that was a real quick way. If I like it, I could just apply the look and run and hit apply and go back. But I can try a couple of the other ones. This focuses mostly on the sky. This one takes it to black and white. And this is a nice one to show how flexible using looks can be. So if I apply a look and it's too much or it's not quite what I want, I can blend that look back very easily with this amount slider. I'm at the bottom of my screen and blend it back. So maybe I do have a bit of the black and white, but I also have the original image. And that's true of any of these. If I click on intensify, you know, it might be too much. It's like, okay, her skin's a little bit too glowing and I might want to pull that back. So the nice thing with any of the looks is that you can blend it back with the original in case it's too strong. But it doesn't stop there. I'm going to leave this at 100%. If I go over to my filters panel on the right, I can see all of the sliders and modifications that were done to create this specific look. And all of these sliders are live. So I can think of a look as, you know, one button makes it look great and send it back to my host application or as a starting point. So in this case, I think it's a little bit too much in the golden hour, and I can just pull that back a little bit to give her a little bit more natural of a skin tone. Uh, maybe I like the idea of the curves function. I wanna see what it's doing. If you look here to the right side, I have a couple of buttons next to the curves. Uh, the one on the far right is a little eyeball, and that allows me to turn on and off or activate or deactivate that one specific filter so I can see how it affects my image. So I see what it's doing and it's kind of nice, but maybe I want to change it. I'm going to reset this filter. I'll just go up here to curves and reset. And instead of doing a point there, I'm going to make an S curve and an S curve lets me pop up my contrast a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit more to the highlights. I just click to make little points here and I bring this down a little bit and let's take a look at how that affects my image. Yeah, it kind of makes it pop a little bit. I think that, you know, we still have a little bit too much of the golden hour. It's a little too strong. Let me turn that off. Looks a little bit more natural. I might even bring down that vibrance a little bit. And this is something else that's really nice with working with looks. And I've gotten this to where I like it. And maybe I shot a dozen images with this exact same lighting in the exact same outfit. And I want to quickly process them all. So I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to process the way that I like it. I'm going to add the saturation and vibrance filter. And I'm going to bring the saturation down just a little bit. And I'm going to bring the vibrance up. Now, let me explain this for those who haven't been to some of my previous webinars. Saturation is like painting with a broomstick. In other words, no matter what the color saturation is, as you move the slider to the right, everything gets more saturated. If you move it to the left, everything gets desaturated. Well, if something all already is a little saturated or oversaturated, the saturation slider doesn't care. It just adds and subtracts, intensifies or reduces. Vibrance, on the other hand, will saturate more muted colors and leave the saturated colors alone and vice versa. If it's oversaturated, those will be the first ones that are reduced when you move the slider to the left. So what I like to do is actually reduce this overall saturation a little bit to make all my colors more muted. And then I bring up the vibrance and then that only adds saturation to the more muted colors and kind of evens things out. So this is the after, this is the before. I really like this. This seems a lot more natural to me. So this is great. This is what I want to use for a bunch of my images. So what I can do with any of the settings I've created, whether I've started from a look or started from scratch, is I can save this as my own Luminar look. 
So we have the predefined looks here. And as a matter of fact, if I click on the word professional, I'll open up our Luminar looks collection. And you can see that a variety of looks come bundled already inside of Luminar Flex. So if you're working with the professional, you get this set. If I'm working on landscape, I'm going to click on this. And I want you to notice that these little thumbnails immediately update. Now, if I click on any of these at this point, it's going to replace those with um, the ones that I've already created, just like we saw with the workspace. So if I click on, say, let's go to some of the more dramatic ones, our creative ones. You know, I want to give this maybe the grunge look. I'm going to apply that. Look at, changed everything from scratch. We've learned that that's an okay mistake to make. I'm just going to go back in time a little bit. I'm going to show you a little trick on that in just a moment. That's a little bit of suspense I'm going to build there. Because I'm going to step back here, and I'm going to save the original look that I created. And if you go save Luminar look, it will again give you a drop-down box, much like we saw in the drop-down box for when you created your own custom workspace. And I'm going to type in Olivia... Um, and I guess we'll call this porch because they were all shot on the porch and I'll hit save. As soon as you do that, it opens up your personal user Luminar looks folder and you can see that this look setting has now been saved in there. And you'll notice that these are the, all the ones that come bundled and there is your personal one. So you can start building your own custom selection of looks that you can go to all the time. I can go back here and hit grunge. Obviously not the best uh, for this image. I built this for another one, but there I can apply this and it applies all of the filters with all of the settings for this. And maybe I like it, but I can still tweak these. And that's one of the great things about looks. So creating your own really easy, very efficient workflow. Now I did want to apply that creative look on top of this one and remember, when I did that earlier, if I went over here to creative and I applied, say, one of these looks, it completely obliterated everything I did. The trick or technique here, depending on how you want to define it, is that I can, once I develop an image, add an adjustment layer. So a lot of times what you want to do is develop an image so it's neutral. You know, I know some folks, they, they have a picture, it's not quite perfectly developed, and they apply a look and the look doesn't give them the, the appearance or the look that they expect because the image hasn't been corrected at all. It might be too dark or too light or problematic. So a normal workflow is I'll try to do a quick fix on a base layer and then I will hit this little plus sign to the right of the word layers and add a new adjustment layer. And as you can see, here's my adjustment layer. As a matter of fact, if I wanted to, I could rename that layer by right clicking on it. I won't now for the sake of time. So I have this uh, adjustment layer, and now I can apply any of these looks on top of it. So maybe I can apply grunge on top. And I like the way this is making the image look. It's kind of stylistic, but I want to dial that back down a little bit. So by being able to blend looks on different adjustment layers, I can really get the final image that I want. So this was before I added the adjustment layer, and this is after. And let's look at a side-by-side -side of the original image and my stylized image. So I have a lot of control. And because I've really created two looks, I could apply this very quickly to multiple images in, from my host applications. While we're talking about looks, I want to mention a couple of other things. First of all, where are your custom looks stored? And also, how, to, how do you modify them? So let's take a look at looks a little bit deeper. First of all, I want to go back to my user Luminar looks. They're all right here. If I right click on them, I will get some pop-ups. Uh, if I like the look that I created, I can you know, simply rename it. I can show it in the Finder or show the, it in the Explorer very easily and even remove it from here. I can also go up here now and this is one of the changes that we've made with Luminar Flex 1.1, is under the same file drop-down menu that I showed you for workspaces, we have Show Luminar Looks folder. And if I click on that, it will reveal where these are located on your hard drive. Okay, 
And as you can see, these are .lmp files. It works the same on Macs and PCs. And I could take this look and I could archive it. I could move it out of the folder if I want to save it, but I don't want to see it all the time. So I want to kind of clean house a little bit. But this is where all your personal looks are stored. And what's great is if I send this to somebody or somebody sends me a look, I can just drop it in this folder and it will immediately be available to me. The other thing you can do is you can add look packs. I'm going to close this because if I go over here to use Luminar Looks and I have an option here that says get more looks. And when you click on that, it will launch your browser. It launches it into the Luminar Marketplace. Let me make this full screen so you can see that. Oh, that didn't make it full screen. There we go. Um, Luminar Marketplace. And if you look here, we have signature looks and looks, and there's LUTs. And as a matter of fact, there are those workspaces that I talked about earlier. Let me just click over there. So with the workspaces, you know, I can download a workspace by Here's one created by fashion photographer Dixie Dixon, Matthew Jordan Smith. We have some great ones by Joel Grimes. So you can download workspaces, which you can then drop into those folders. And going back here, let's take a look at looks. There's also looks that you can download. And as you can see, we have some premium looks that were created by some uh, photograph professional photographers that we offer to sell for them. And we also have a bunch of free looks. And as a matter of fact, at the end of the webinar, actually, I'll have Vanelli uh, put a link. He'll put a link to uh, a free looks package and some LUTs that you can download just for having attended the webinar. So if I want to try some of these, maybe I'll look at uh, Summer DJI Mavic. These are some aerial ones. I can click on Learn More. I can see what the before and afters would look like with some of these looks. And then I can simply click on download and this will download a looks package onto my hard drive, usually in your downloads folder. So I downloaded that looks package. And if I go up here under file, I can say add Luminar looks collection. It'll then let me navigate to where I am downloading items. There it is, Summer DJI Mavic Looks Pack. I click on that. I click on Open. It says it's been successfully added. And now if I go to this drop-up menu or pop-up menu, it's already here, but these are those look packages and it's here and it's available to me. So adding look packages are really, really easy. As a matter of fact, they're running a special if you purchase Luminar Flex 1.1 in the month of July. There is a multi-pack of over 300 looks that will be available to you to download in 16, I believe, different packages. So it's very easy to create your own looks, to add looks, and also to clean house if you wanted to remove looks or remove packages. One of the other things I do like about the way you can work with looks is there's something here that says all Luminar looks, which will show you everything, but there's also one that says favorites. And you'll notice that by default, this is empty because we haven't created any favorites. So how do you do that? Well, let's go over to professional. Let's say I love using the AI auto enhancer all the time. And I'm also a big fan of this cool one here called structure booster. Um, not necessarily for this image, but for some of my landscapes. So I'm going to put a, I'm going to click on the little star and it turns orange. And I'll just jump into a couple of other areas. Uh, we'll go to my user one. I really like my personal grunge one. And then maybe I'll grab something from creative. I really liked their grunge. And maybe we'll go with street life. Now, once these have been clicked on this little star, now, when I go over to this area right here, favorites, I see exactly those five different looks. So I don't have to go back and forth between different looks collections. If I know the five or eight or 10 that I always use, I'll just make them favorites. And I can just jump to that section. And again, it allows me to work a lot faster. I wanted to show you some of the functionality of the filters catalog, some of which is obvious and some of which, you know, it's, it's a little sneaky that a lot of people, you know, we don't dig deep or self-taught. So let's take a look at the filters catalog and I'm going to clear my workspace just so that we have a neutral area to start with. 
And if you scroll through here, you'll see they are broken up into categories, essential, issue fixers, creative. And sometimes when you're working, you're thinking, you know, I, I, I've thrown on my sky, my Accent AI filter and the image looks better, but now I want to do something creative. Well, instead of looking at all of them and having to scroll through, I could click on this drop down menu and show me and ask it, just show me my essential filters or show me just my creative filters so that I'm not distracted by other things here. And I say, oh, look, let me try this Orton effect. It's like, oh, that's kind of interesting. I like it. I like some aspects. Maybe I don't like the softness. So I can learn from this. And by the way, when it comes to learning, this is usually turned on by default. You may have turned it off, but this little eye inside of a circle, if that is orange, when you hover over any of these filters, you'll get a brief description of what that filter does to your image. It's a great way to learn about the filters. We go into much more detail on the manual that's available on the website, but this is a nice quick way that you can do this. Sometimes it gets distracting after you've been using it for a while, so you can click that little button right here and turn that off. And of course I could say, oh, I have a problem. Let me look at issue fixers. And it just shows you things such as dehazing or increasing clarity. I'm gonna show all of them again because I wanna show you a couple of other aspects that you can work with. First of all, there's the search box. And with the search box, you know, our gut instinct says, well, if I'm looking for say my fog filter, I'll type in fog, okay? And there it is. But what you may notice is it also brings up dehaze, which is a issue fixer when you have fog. So when you type something into the search box, you're not just finding its name. These different filters have all been tagged and keywords have been added that if you're trying to do something, just type what that is and you may see a filter that will help solve the problem. Let me type in the word noise and you'll see I have two options that come up. Denoise, if I have an image that has a lot of noise, maybe it was shot very low light, but I also have one for grain, which in a sense is adding noise, okay, if I wanted to do that. So the nice thing about that search box is it's more than just searching for the name of the filter. In some cases, you can actually find things such as I could type in glow and I can see what filters will affect or add glow to my image. So that's really nice. Let me reset this and I'm gonna show you two more things that I find really valuable that a lot of folks don't necessarily use that often. And if we go to this drop down, you see favorites and recent. I'm gonna to jump to recent first because that's gonna help me create my favorite favorites. If I click on recent, you'll see there's a list of filters here. And what happens is as you use Luminar Flex, it remembers what filters you've used most frequently and most recently, and you can get to those very quickly. So it's a great way to see what filters you tend to use and also to get to some of your recently used filters. So there's Accent AI, I like that one. And I'm gonna do something here. I'm gonna click on this little star, just like we did with the looks, and I'm gonna say that's a favorite. I love using tone, that's a favorite. I probably, let's see, Golden Hour, that's a favorite, and Sky Enhancer. These are a lot of the uh, artificial intelligent filters that I, I like to use. I like to use Detail Enhancer and Remove Color Cast. So these are just from my recent ones, but if I go to All, I know I like to have Vignette as a favorite, and I know I like to have um, my Develop as a favorite. So now if I go to just my favorites, I can see these and I can bring them in as I need them. So there's a lot of power in being able to work with your filters catalog that can help you get the filters you need very, very quickly. So that's just a quick overview. I did wanna show one thing before we take some questions. And so I'm gonna switch over to photos for the Mac operating system. We have some images here. And if I wanna work with an image in photos, it's really easy. The first thing you need to do, okay, to make this work is you need to go under the Apple menu. You only need to do this once, okay? And this is just to give it permissions. You go to system preferences and under system preferences, you need to go to extensions. And under extensions, you can go to photo editing. And here is where you give permission uh, for photos to access different third-party plugins are really, you're giving the third-party plugin permission to insert itself into the photos application. And there I've just checked Luminar Flex. 
Uh, without this checked, it won't show up, but you only have to do that once. And now if I have an image and I want to work with it, uh, let's try this one. Double click on that. We'll go to edit, adjust, Luminar Flex. And there I've sent the image into Luminar Flex. I'm going to just choose my Relight and Color workspace. No, as a matter of fact, let's try something we haven't done. Let's try Intensify. I really like the structure here. So I'll bring that in. It's bringing up some detail on the boats, add a little bit of structure. Uh, I want to add some small details. Whenever I do anything with details or grain, I like to click on it to bring it to 100% viewing so I can really see what's happening. And I'm going to just bring in a lot more clarity to the small details and some microstructure. Okay, we'll click that to bring that back a little bit. Okay, let's take a look at the before, and that's the after. Okay, that's a nice quick little fix. Maybe we'll add a little bit of my uh, saturation and vibrance. And then I hit Save Changes. All of these changes have now been applied, and it's sent back two photos where I can continue to work with it. If I wanted to, I could revert, as a matter of fact, before I revert to original, that's my before, that's my after, and then I can click done. And you'll see here, after I've clicked done, that I now have the processed image. Now, one of the nice things about working in photos, and this is the way Apple works, is if I decide, you know what, I really wanna see my original, all I have to do is double click it to open it, click back onto the edit, there I can do before and after, but I can always revert back to the original image if for some reason I don't like what I've done. Uh, so there's still that safety feature. And then I click on done. I want to jump back into Photoshop because uh, we were, this is the plugin that we sent to Photoshop. So let me go back here to Flex. This is what I was working on. And I'm going to actually go back all the way to where I really liked what I had done to this image. And this just goes back, you know, we left this a little while ago. Um, and I want to go back here and I think stylistically get back to something I want. Yeah, I didn't like that. Didn't like that. I got to find the spot that I liked. Okay, so let's say I like that. Because I made this a smart object, I'm going to hit apply. It's going to send this back to Photoshop. And you'll notice, and let's, uh, it'll take a second to do, it's processing all these layers. Okay, it's done. And we can see what's happened. If I go back in time, I can see this was my original, this is my later one. But I can also, because it's a smart object, say, you know what, I just want to turn off this plugin. And it's very easy to do. Now, turning on and off is one thing that's nice. But the other thing is, I can also double click on it. It reloads Luminar Flex. And because it was a smart object, all of those adjustments are still dynamic, and I can update them. So it's not a situation where it's like, oh, I wish I had done something to the image before. I can very easily double click, go back into the plugin, modify some sliders, close it again. And because it's live, I don't have to worry about, oh, I have to rebuild that from scratch. So that's a quick overview of some of the features and functionality of Luminar Flex. I do want to point out that if you go to our website, you can go to the Flex plugin, and under there, you can find the user guide, which will give you lots of details about how everything works, including a description of each of the filters. As a matter of fact, if you go to some of these filters, such as, say, um, our essential filters, we're even starting to add little video clips uh, where you can actually get a walkthrough of how that filter works. So that's a really nice feature. In addition, you can also go to uh, the uh, education. We have videos you can watch. We have webinars that you can replay. You can ask questions. There's your support. So check out the website, and you can find out a lot of the features and functionalities that are available to you. And with that, I'm going to initially thank everybody. I'm not ending the webinar now, but I want to thank everybody for joining who you know, only have an hour of their time budgeted. But if there are any questions that people have, I will address those, type them into the question box. And V, if you could hand those off, that would be great. Hey, Abba, you know what I'm noticing? A lot of people are asking, what's the difference between Flex and Luminar? 
Oh, that is a great question, and that is a question that we get a lot. And I'll give you a quick, we, we have some things on the website, but Flex is designed specifically to use as a plugin with those host applications that I talked about before, you know, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Lightroom Classic, Photos for Mac, Aperture, as well as Adobe um, Photoshop Elements. So they're plugins. Lightroom, or I'm sorry, Lightroom, Luminar 3 is designed as a standalone application where if you currently aren't using any of the workflows, maybe you don't use Lightroom and you just want to be able to uh, work with your images, it gives you the ability to have a library where you can store all your images and you can go in and make the modifications. Uh, I want to remind you that if you haven't bought Luminar, they are running a special with this Luminar Flex 1.1 release where we're giving away 300 plus looks as well as some LUTs. There was the link in the chat, so double check on that to some free ones just for attending this webinar. And one of the things I didn't mention, and sometimes we, we forget to talk about it, is that the engineers who have been working night and day, that they've really worked to speed up the application. That if you have been using 1.0 and you switch to 1.1, you should see that it has uh, is a lot more robust, it's a lot quicker and it should be even a better experience than it already is. So if you haven't tried it, uh, download it, give it a shot. If you're new to it, you can download a working trial to really see if it fits what you need. And if you have further questions, support at skylum.com. Uh, you can send your questions to, and they will get back to you with answers. So with that, I want to thank Vanelli for co-hosting with me and answering the questions online. And I want to thank everybody who's taken the time out of their day to join us for their webinar. And with that, be well.